Now look at this. I have written two pieces of codes. Okay. It is basically to find out a number is a prime number or not. You are very very familiar with this kind of code. You have actually learned it to do it this way. But I have written another method. Okay. Then you will understand that why in class 11 we learned it this way. Okay. A normal, very normal way of finding uh, a number is a prime number or not can be done this way also. Though nobody writes program like this but still it can be written. A flag variable is taken. Okay, you check if 2 and 3 are uh, like basically uh, if the number is, if sorry, not uh, percentage, you can write if the number, whatever you are checking, if n basically double equal to 2 or n double equal to 3, then you can say this prime number directly. And then what you have done, you have fixed up a range between 2 and n. Between 2 and n, you have fixed up a range. So if my number is 12, Basically what will happen? The range will be between 2 and 11. So I am going to divide original number 12 by all the numbers from 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 11. Okay. So what will happen in that case? I have to divide it by all the numbers. Okay. N is being attempted to divide by all the numbers. If anybody divides it completely, then flag becomes equal to 0. Fine. So imagine the number is 30. So if the number is 13, what will happen? Nobody will be able to divide between 2 and 12. What will happen? Nobody will be able to divide 13. So that is why 13 is a prime number. We have learned it. The point is, here what should we write as computational complexity? Or in big O notation, what do we write? Okay? If it is n, look at this. Imagine this whole thing, this condition will check in. Okay, test yesterday I showed you how to do basically uh, the time complexity or time calculation when each statements are involved. Okay, test will be taking some time, this will be taking some time, fine. Even this variable also will take some flag equal to 1, this execution also takes time. So say all together, I am just calculating roughly this taking C0 amount of time. All together, following the rules of the if statement. Then we can see here what is happening is this is going on for n steps or say we can say n minus 1 amount of steps. So if it is going for n minus 1 amount of steps then and if this part basically takes say c1 amount of time so I can take say that this is taking almost this much of time c1 into n minus 1 and all together say this one also takes another time say c2. So basically if we write it will become C0 plus C1 into N minus 1 and C2. So as a matter of fact, as a whole, it can be approximately written as ON because it is depending mainly on N. If N increases, then this one increases, so it is mainly depending on N. Because for C0 and C2 will remain same. If I increase N, if I keep on increasing N, that will not have any impact on C0 and C2. C0 and C2 will always be same. So if I increase n, what will happen? This time will keep on increasing. So basically the algorithm will take more time to execute. So basically here this part, this way of checking a number is the prime number or not, we can say that this particular algorithm uh, takes O n maximum of n steps. Okay, or O n amount of time. But if you look at the normal way, our way of doing a wrong statement here, sorry. Uh, if the number n double equals to 2 or if the number double equals to 3, exactly what I have done. Fine? Exactly the same thing what I have done here, I will do here. But we have learned it this way. We have found the square root of the number. So if I take the square root of the number and if I use the square root, then ultimately if I do the rough estimation of the whole thing, if I break it up this way, what will happen? It will basically be dependent on O root over n because you are finding the square root of n. So if you find the square root of n, that means if your n size increases every time the square root is uh, calculated. So basically this program, this algorithm will be dependent on O square root of n. That means on square root of n mainly it is going to depend on. 
So O n versus square root of n. Obviously, we can make out that this will take lesser time to execute. So as an algorithm, we can say that this is more efficient. Why more efficient? That we have to prove it by writing it, by computing the time. I did not compute this time. If you go by these breakups, which I will show you in the notes, it will ultimately uh, be O square root of n. So since the efficiency of this one is O square root of n, that means for any size of input n, any specific size of input n, at the most square root of n number of steps will be involved, whereas here n number of steps will be involved. So since square root is lesser than n, so therefore we can say that this algorithm is a better algorithm. So basically what can happen is mostly the questions will be in this form. Like what you need to understand here the comparison between two different algorithms. That is what mainly we are learning in this chapter. Another comparison I can show you here. Uh, what will happen is if I go for uh, normal search methods. Fine. There are two kinds of searching. Linear search and binary search. Binary search you have done it very recently you know it. So imagine there is an array or there is a list of n elements, input size is n. So if we want to manually search for it, for i in range n, so what you have to do here, you have to write if the number item, say we are looking for a number item, if number equal to, let's say this is p, is equal to p of i, fine. Then only you will say that we found the thing, you can take a flag variable in here, whatever, or you can break the loop and then finally you can say yes the number was found if the flag variable is double equal to 1 that means we found it from the location okay now what will happen is this is how basically we do linear search right in linear search we basically take a variable equal to 0 and then we manually look into every cell of the list. If my list is like this, okay, that means first I will check an item is the number I am looking for. See, item is equal to this, or item is equal to this, or item is equal to this, or item is equal to this. Imagine here item matches. That means at the most I have to take here four steps so that for four elements, four comparisons I need to make, four times this loop will go on, right? So we can say that this algorithm will be dependent on the value of n. So this, if we compute the computational complexity of this, then this will in bigger notation will be O n. Why O n? Because if the number is placed at the last cell, yes, tomorrow, tomorrow's lecture we will discuss uh, another point called worst complexity. Okay, worst complexity means the, the worst possible case. What's possible case here, supposing if the number is placed at the last cell, then obviously we have to peep through each cell because in this method we individually go through every cell to look for the number. So if the number is placed at the last cell, that means at the most it will take four, four steps to execute for an input size of four. So it is dependent on n, so O n. But if we compare it with binary search mechan mechanism, now here you need to understand in binary search mechanism, what happens? Every time you divide the array or the list into two halves, the number can be in the upper half or number can be at the bottom half. We have seen that. So how long can you divide a number till it is possible for you to divide a number? So when the space basically will be reduced to 1, will you be able to divide it? You will not be able to divide it. So imagine here also my input size is n. Okay? And since you are <coughs> dividing the number every time into two halves, fine. Imagine that altogether I took k steps to complete it. That means the loop, if you remember what was our loop? Our loop was while lower bound less than equal to upper bound and uh, a flag variable double equal to false. That is how we set the loop for uh, binary search. That means it took, say the loop executed k number of times. If this while loop executed k number of times, that means basically what happened? Basically k times 
you could divide the num divide the array or the list into two halves. So we can say for an element size n and two to the power k equal to one. Because when it became one, we could not divide it anymore. So n divided by two to the power k, where k is the number of steps, equal to one. Which means we can say, which means we can say that two to the power k equal to n. Okay. Now if I take log two on both sides, fine. Logarithm will happen with the base two. Then what will happen? It will become this k multiplied by sine squared to no integer. Okay. If I take log two on both sides, the power goes at the front and it multiplies the whole thing. So k multiplied by log two of two, and this side also log this two. Fine. This is what we are getting. If we take log to base two on either side, log base two. So what happens then? This log to base two is basically equal to one. So basically we can say k multiplied by one. That is k. Okay. K multiplied by one equal to log to n. So k basically means log to. So in this case, how many steps it took? Fine, that will be mainly dependent on log to n. So this computational complexity can be written as this, right? So now if I compare these two, we can say that this is n and this is log to n. So the log to n is definitely lesser than n. So this is this one. This algorithm is a better algorithm. Fine. So here, this this is just a rough way of showing it. Fine. <coughs> Always we cannot put down the time and compute. Fine. Binary search mechanism <coughs> is such where the things are divided into two halves. So if we try to compute the computational complexity or the time complexity this way, then it becomes easier for us to understand. <coughs> Fine, but you don't need to worry because always uh, the things will not be that complicated. Or rather, you will not be given some kind of program which is not there in your curriculum, and you have to calculate the computational com complexity. This chapter has been introduced by CBSE from this year, and first time your your batch is doing the this chapter. Earlier it was there in ISC level, okay. And as far as my knowledge and experience goes. I don't think very complicated programs will be given to you to judge its complexity. Fine. So tomorrow we will practice some uh, programs we will take from the exercise. If you see the standard of the question, you will be happy about it. I will take from the book some questions which are given in your textbook, and those programs or those algorithms efficiency we will try to calculate in terms of big notation. Fine.